This video is the fourth part of the Spring Boot testing mini-series. In this video, we will look at how to write tests for JSON serialization and deserialization. First, we will discuss why we might want to test serialization and deserialization separately, and then we will look at how to write such tests. In an earlier video of this mini-series, we briefly touched on testing the deserialization of requests and serialization of responses using at web MVC test. We saw how to use mock MVC to test the correctness of request deserialization and use JSON path matches to verify the serialized output of responses. So, if we already can test both these matters, why would we want to write separate tests for them? Well, we might want to write a custom serializer for some custom type, for example. We could use this type anywhere, so testing the serialization and deserialization of that type has benefits. Continuing with the example set in the previous videos, we want to start using monetary amount instead of big decimal for presenting money. So for example here in the receipt response, we have changed the type of amount to monetary amount. Now, if we tried to serialize an instance of this class to JSON, we would get weird results. So if we run a web MVC test, we can add an add do print here to see the response. Let me just copy the response from here and format it to see the result a little better. So we can see that there's a lot of stuff in here and that's because there is no serializer for this type and Jackson just serializes whatever fields it finds in that type. So this is why we might want to write a custom serializer for the type. Now, this is not the tutorial on how to write such serializers, but this here is what it could look like. We could, of course, test this in our controller tests, but wouldn't it be better if we could test this separately? When we separate the concern of testing the serialization into its own tests, we don't have to duplicate that concern into other tests. When we know the serialization works, we can trust it to work everywhere. In previous videos, we have already seen how Spring Boot uses different annotations to auto-configure beans for testing different slices of the application. To test the serialization and deserialization separately, we can use the add JSON test annotation. Add JSON test will auto configure beans for Jackson object mapper, any custom add JSON component, which here basically means our money serialization class, and any Jackson modules, which means any custom Jackson modules we might use. Since Spring Boot only loads what's needed, these tests are more lightweight than controller tests. So here in our example, Spring Boot has also auto-configured a Jackson tester helper. What this allows us to do is to instantiate some object and then ask Jackson tester to serialize it. So this Jackson test write receipt does exactly that. And this JSON content result here makes it easy to write assertions because we can use assert j assert that and then extract some values using JSON path expressions. So we can say assert that JSON extracting JSON path string value and then use a JSON path expression to match a field from JSON. We already started by adding a custom serializer for the monetary amount type but let's say we wanted to change the default date format for, of the response as well. So we could have JSON format here and it uses a custom date format. The same way we are asserting the amount, we can assert the date as well. It's also possible to write the expected JSON into a separate file. So here we have a receipt JSON file with the expected fields. And the easiest way to use it is to put it into source test resources and put it into the same package as the test class is in, so Spring Test will automatically find it. Now all we have to do is to change the assertion to assert that JSON is equal to JSON file name. If there's a lot of fields, this approach could be a little cleaner. It's good to remember 
moving test data into a separate file can hide relevant information, making the test harder to understand. So as we can see, testing serialization is straightforward. What about deserialization? We already saw the serialization code, so a deserializer would be just written in similar fashion. Maybe we also want to be able to create orders with a certain amount. Real objects would be more complex, but for the sake of simplicity we have only one field here, which is the amount. To test the deserialization we use Jackson tester again. So this time we have some JSON that we need to deserialize, and then we call Jackson tester parse object JSON to deserialize the content. And now we will get an object of our wanted type. Which also means that we can then directly assert some fields from that object. As we can see, testing deserialization is as easy as testing serialization. And of course, if we wanted to, we could move the JSON into a separate file again. So again, we put the input JSON file into a file, which is again located in the same package. And then we call Jackson tester read object file name, which will do the rest. Same thing applies here considering the test readability. So while we make the test a little shorter, it becomes a little more difficult to see at one glance what exactly happens in the test. When dealing with custom types, we might need to write custom serializers or deserializers. Sometimes we also want to customize the serialization format of some types. Testing serialization and deserialization of custom types or format is simple with at JSON test. Spring Boot provides helpers like Jackson Tester for verification. In the following video of this mini-series, we will discuss how to test REST calls to other services. Thank you for watching, like always, stay curious, and I will see you in the next video.